Thank you, Adil. Uh, again, it's a pleasure to be sitting here in the company of such uh, <coughs> uh, disting distinguished people. Uh, again, we're talking about environment, we're talking about water. Um, I'll, I'll expand the discussion a little bit further into energy. Uh, and again, not by coincidence, probably, I mean, these are uh, three of the, the most uh, pressing problems that humanity is facing as a whole. Uh, I mean, also ranked, I mean, in the top five most pressing problems. Again, it's subjective. I mean, it, it, it's no, uh, there's no sort of, I mean, uh, given uh, what the top ten problems are that, that humanity is facing. But again, uh, being a, a technologist, being uh, associated with uh, science and engineering, uh, in working in the field of energy, I mean, these topics sort of ring close to heart, so I'm, I'm uh, talking about it. So energy, again, uh, related very closely to environment, uh, one of the, the most pressing needs. And um, something that has been made uh, far worse than what probably the real impact would have been if we had been wise in our consumption patterns of energy. Uh, energy consumption has grown. I mean, with, with the, it's directly related to the population. Uh, everybody needs energy, I mean, for, for uh, sustained uh, growth uh, in their own right. Uh, it's also directly associated with the uh, increase in development of a nation. So it's directly tied to GDP of a country. I mean, uh, so there's a direct correlation, a percentage by percentage, in, in terms of, I mean, the amount of energy required by a nation to the GDP growth of the country. And unfortunately, um, the major uses of energy just by the convenience of uh, their existence have been heat and electricity. So being part of the electrical engineering department is sort of directly related to uh, what, what the whole field of electrical engineering started out to be. So uh, about 100, 110 years ago, it was all about electrical power, electrical energy, and uh, transportation of that energy from one place to another. So it's a very convenient form of energy. You can generate it at one place, transport it over a long distance. It's sort of energy available on tap. So you don't even think about it. I mean, uh, at least in other parts of the world. Here we are constantly reminded that we are sort of uh, lacking this, this particular source of energy. Uh, but then heat as well. So the generation of this energy itself poses a lot of uh, problems as far as the environment is concerned. Uh, the biggest source for this energy currently in use are fossil fuels in different forms. Uh, we, we use them, I mean, everybody's sort of aware. I mean, it, so it has a huge environmental impact directly. Uh, there's another, again, a very abundant resource that we have in Pakistan and at different places in the world, and it's hydroelectric. Uh, generation of electricity, so I mean, there are different ways of converting forms of energy into electrical energy. Uh, so that also has an environmental impact. I mean, it's localized, but it's there. Uh, it's still considered part of the sustainable forms of uh, generating electrical energy, but again, the environmental impact is something that people talk about quite a lot. People used to talk about it much more than they do right now, because probably the environmental impact of building hydroelectric power plants has been uh, sort of mitigated in many instances. Maybe, relatively speaking, the importance has gone down a little in the sense that, I mean, if you talk about the environmental impacts of other ways and forms of generating electrical energy, uh, it's higher. Um, then we have also, I mean, uh, nuclear uh, uh, energy being converted into electrical energy based on certain principles and so on. So, in a way, again, the, the, envi the potential environmental impacts of uh, something not going right in a nuclear power plant, everybody's sort of, I mean, aware of that. Also, the, the direct impact of how to do away with the waste which is created uh, is an issue. Again, something that people have sort of tried to overcome uh, in many instances in trying to mitigate the risks associated with it. Uh, so, all of these are sort of the topics that, that relate to energy, environment, uh, so the work uh, that we do, uh, or, or the work that we are trying to do here at LUMS SSC is uh, twofold. It has a two-pronged approach. It's in trying to explore uh, sustainable ways of 
generating electricity or generating forms of energy which might ultimately translate into electrical energy but we might be able to use intermediate forms that get generated for example heat so I mean uh, we can use it directly why go to electricity and then maybe convert it back into heat or convert it into mechanical energy so right now a very convenient form of utilizing electrical energy is in the form of industrial motors where the, the, that, that energy is used to convert into mechanical work and then it's utilized for very various purposes so if we can go to mechanical before we go to electrical so maybe we can do away with portion of electrical uh, uh, energy utilization so not trying to do away with electrical engineering but I mean again uh, sort of optimizing it a little uh, and then also talking about uh, how do we realize our social responsibility towards the environment and use the energy which we have more wisely in a more efficient manner so we're working on developing awareness and developing ways of using uh, the energy in a more conservative manner so we're talking about uh, conservation of the energy which is already available as well so it's to uh, uh, do more with less uh, in a better and in a longer for over a longer period of time so those sort of I mean drive the work that we're doing um, we're doing projects in, in uh, foundation projects in trying to develop ways of uh, generating electricity uh, uh, we have projects underway which are trying to uh, look at certain non-traditional ways of generating electricity for example using hydrokinetics so I mean hydroelectrics or uh, micro turbines generally work on the principle of uh, high momentum of water being available so here we're trying to say okay we are we have one of the largest irrigation networks it's already built so uh, the damage to the environment already done how can we utilize it more efficiently um, so uh, we have large volumes of water which are available the speeds are slow so how do we develop that fundamental body of knowledge that tells us the potential which exists in these volumes of water that are moving through the plains of Pakistan or Punjab or Pakistan in general uh, what are the various technologies which are available which can be utilized efficiently in converting it into, into electrical or mechanic, mechanical and then to electrical energy uh, can we do it in a way that the, it, it overall makes more sense than other ways of, of generating electricity um, solar energy uh, most well known and most talked about source of uh, renewable energy that we have and rightly so I mean it's the most abundant source of energy that we have Unfortunately, uh, we've not been able to develop efficient mechanisms of converting that energy. So we, we, we're trying to explore that. We're trying to explore it in a uh, in certain traditional and certain not so traditional manners. So we're talking about um, uh, on a smaller scale. I mean, so there's a lot of work going on larger scale solar projects. We're saying, okay, uh, given the special circumstances that we have in Pakistan, where unfortunately everybody has been forced to be responsible for even the generation of their own electrical energy can we do it in a sustainable manner at smaller scales where rather than developing on un inefficient generators running on fuel that we do not even have in Pakistan can we do it in a way where at least on uh, the scale that is needed for emergency electrical supplies we can do it in every household so uh, can we do it using technologies which are indigenously developed so can we collect enough sunlight convert it into another form of energy say thermal and use it to generate electricity so we did two projects which are going on one is using a steam turbine exploring what the potential is where the limitations exist on a smaller scale and then also using a, an external combustion engine slightly different from the ones that we use in our automobiles but I mean still uh, a form of an engine a heat engine uh, that can take a source of heat energy and convert it into electrical energy uh, can we use that route to generate it 
so this is sort of related to generation, but we're also sort of uh, working on how to efficiently monitor what form of energy is being utilized, how more awareness or more control would allow people people to tweak their 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 patterns of living to maybe utilize the energy more efficiently so that the need for generation is reduced and that's a very fundamental question uh, the one unit of energy which is actually consumed in a household uh, requires uh, uh, about uh, eight times more energy at the generation end so if we conserve the potential of saving at the generation end is about ten folds higher. So conservation itself is, is very, very important. Um, so we are uh, doing a project on smart meters, uh, which are sort of, I mean, sort of the uh, similar meters that you're sort of aware of, but I mean, they are uh, devices that will keep on continuously monitoring the consumption based on the patterns that they recognize, they can generate alerts and notifications. So people uh, can uh, generate triggers for various events and then take action, or the system itself can take action. Maybe change the usage pattern where elasticity exists. So if in the consumption pattern during a day, there is a possibility of moving certain electrical loads in, space, in, in, the, in the temporal domain, so you can move it back and forth. Maybe the overall consumption can be optimized based on constraints which are provided as inputs to the, to the system. So we're working on that. So uh, at LAMS, I mean, if I talk about uh, the initiatives, uh, we have deployed uh, uh, a network of smart meters, and uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident, again, I can't be sure with, with all the initiatives that are going on at the distribution companies, but this is the first integrated multi-vendor smart meter infrastructure that we have. And it's not a big infrastructure, but it shows, it, it overcomes one of the biggest barriers that, that the mental barriers that distribution companies have in their minds. I mean, uh, we don't want to be tied to one type of a meter or a, or, or a single meter vendor. Can this particular system work when we have meters of different diverse types? So we have demonstrated that particular uh, infrastructure setup here at LAMS. Uh, it's a small setup right now, but it, it takes in information from various types of meters, provides that information in a collective manner in a single uh, user uh, environment, a user interface. Uh, we've also done the initiative on, on uh, energy efficient lighting, a very nice initiative because it uh, not only allowed us to explore the possibilities of efficient lighting, but it also highlighted something more important. Uh, the lack of regulation in Pakistan in introduction of new technology. So there is a possibility of getting in highly, quote-unquote, apparently efficient forms of lighting which have a much higher impact, detrimental impact on the energy distribution infrastructure because it introduces as far as the measurement goes of, of the units consumed, of the power which is being consumed, it tells the consumer, well, you're consuming less. But you're consuming less amount of power in a very short period of time. So the peak power which is demanded is very high. So in those infrastructures which generally are now abundant everywhere in Pakistan because of the peculiar situation that we're in, where organizations and uh, uh, industries have captive generation, people generally uh, plan the, the, the capacity based on what is apparently the need of power. If there is a peak, suddenly all that planning sort of goes to waste. So you have capacity, but the generator cannot give you uh, a certain amount of energy over one hour it needs to give you, provide you every instance in time that amount of energy which is required at that instance in time. So if the peak demand goes up and people are not even aware of it, it, it would appear as if something is, is not going right in the system. It can also lead to other uh, uh, problems and issues. So 
we developed a mechanism of testing out the various lighting sources which were available to confirm which ones actually at least pass the international standards for compliance of quality of energy and so on. So um, we are also working with photovoltaic. I mean, uh, that's not uh, a particular technology that we indigenously develop here in Pakistan, but there's a potential of developing uh, uh, or putting in intellectual inputs into uh, devising more efficient ways of extracting the available amount of energy through solar photovoltaics. Um, again, something which is uh, being carried out currently at LUMS. Uh, we also explored other, other ways of uh, saving energy, We're working up on uh, devising mechanisms for uh, more efficient driving of machines, which is 70% of all electrical load uh, in, 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 in any nation. 